This is essentially an unexplored frontier of the Philippines. This was part of the high seas, unclaimed and unprotected. The U.S. territory given to the Philippines by the United Nations in 2012, and that it's largely unexplored. There was enough evidence to show that it was connected to the Philippines, geologically and geomorphologically, therefore uh, was part of our continental shelf. It's an area as big as Luzon. If I'm not mistaken, 13 million hectares. Benham Bank is composed of mesophotic reefs, which are reefs that are found 50 to 150 meters deep. They said 100% coral cover, and I'm like, that doesn't exist. 100% is crazy. And there was 100% coral cover. There's a lot of deep sea that occupies us. If all our sea mounds have coordinates, and all of those sea mounds have eager people to study them, we'd be way, way ahead. Well, surprisingly, we've uh, each site that we've gone to has a sort of like its own characteristics. The very first site we landed on was just covered with coral, plating coral sheets just overlapping one another. The corals that live here have the potential to reveal a new species that's never been found anywhere else. The spawning fish that live here actually have the potential to help recover fisheries across the country. There are studies that say that this could be possible refuge of fish that are found in the shallow parts of the reef. What are the responses of this system that are far off, for example, to sea level rise, ocean acidification, um, or bleaching, if there are, there are the bleaching events here? It would be great to be able to identify a place where recovery can begin to rebuild oceans in the Philippines. The Philippines, in general, is at the center of the center of marine biodiversity on the planet. However, there's also heavy fishing pressure. And because of that, the fish in the Philippines are getting smaller. It's getting harder and harder for fishermen to make a living. We know there's appalling poverty, especially among fisher folks, who are considered as the poorest of the poor. So uh, you cannot possibly restore fisheries, you know, make them abundant without ensuring that the marine ecosystems that they live on are healthy. Venom could be a source to recover those fisheries. We also may have even more biodiversity than we know of. The fishing here uh, is able to continue into the distant future to feed many people and help the Philippines continue to grow. For me, it's a survival issue. They can be seen as our adaptation strategy, make the ecosystem resilient. So it has a better way of coping with the impacts of climate change. If we have intact coral reef areas at the eastern side, it can help also buffer from climate change. It is the perfect time for our decision makers working with stakeholders, citizens, to craft that management framework. So. In the meantime, we need to make sure that these resources, especially the fragile uh, living resources in this area, are adequately protected so that they can also be for the benefit of future generations. It's not only the natural resources that we are protecting, it's eventually protecting everybody. It is very important, and not just to the Philippines, just to our fisher folks, but to the rest of the world. The biological resources that are in Benham Rice, we can consider this as a common wealth for mankind. Benham Bank, a very significant area, not just in the Philippines, but in the entire world, should have that legal protection that it deserves. Benham Bank is a very special place. As stewards, we should do something to protect it. Not just for us, but for the generation that depend on us to ensure that we have a better planet, place to live in. And we have this special place in our own territory, and we hope Benham will inspire us to do something for Benham, for the country, and for our world.